Hi everybody. Today I'm going to work on this piece of watercolor paper and I'm going to start by using some natural materials for mark making. So, you know, fall's coming, there's going to be a lot of dried natural materials in your gardens and under your trees and fields, so keep an eye out for those. This is just a twig. This is just a twig that came off of one of my barberry bushes, but I just like the lightness of it, so we'll try that. I have some dried lavender now. <laughs> Probably what if I drag this through some paint, as you can see I'm already kind of losing the dried blossoms, so we may end up with some texture in there that we weren't counting on. That's okay. And this, I'm not sure what it is. If you know, tell me. But there is a fence along my property, and when I went to do fall cleanup last year, this was blown up against the fence. So it came from somebody else's property. There's nothing like this on my property, but I thought they were cool. So I just picked them up and brought them in and gave them a light swish in some water and let them dry. So they've just been kind of sitting around down here, and I thought, you know what? I think I might just break a couple of these off and see what that works like. So those are what I'm going to start with. This will be a mixed media collage piece in the end, but I thought I would use these just to try something different for a background. My piece will cover most of this area. so. Whatever ends up in the middle it probably isn't going to be seen. I'm going to start with some Da Vinci Payne's Gray Fluid Acrylic. I think Fluid Acrylic is probably going to be my best bet. And let's see. I'm going to start with this piece, I think. And I'm just going to break it off. And I'm going to drag it through the paint. And I should be able to get some kind of fine lines, I think. And where it's bouncing back up, I'm getting little speckles. So I'm kind of liking that. Very light and airy. Really organic. It's just fun to just pull out some materials and play and see what, I mean, what's the worst that can happen, you know? I can paint over this or cut it up and use it for collage or whatever. Okay, so that's the twig. Let's try this lavender. I'm going to hold both both pieces kind of together. See, it's fallen. I don't know. Maybe the paint will hold it together. I wasn't expecting like impressions of the blossoms or anything. I just knew I would just get some kind of marks. And that's what I'm getting. As well as a lot of pieces of lavender falling off of there. Which, when this dries, whoops, <laughs> oh, there went that one. When this dries, I can just brush those lavender blossoms off. But these are marks that you aren't necessarily going to be able to get with a paintbrush. Yep, I like that. Now, this, I'm not sure. Let's just take one off the top here. If I go and just put paint on the tips, just on these ends, I'm just going to get dots. And I don't know. Mm -mm. Just a little more concentrated. 
color here and there really is all that that's given me. But it's kind of cool. I mean, because I'm concentrating on the edges, I can use a little more solid um, bits and pieces of this paint along the outside. But you know what? I'm good with that. I like it. I'm going to dry this and then I'll show you what I pulled out. Yes, I actually kind of sort of planned something today, which is, I know, unusual for me. But um, then I'll show you what I pulled out and I'll be back. Okay, this background is dry. And the reason that I shows the Payne's Gray, and this Payne's Gray is pretty blue, is because I used it, I spent a long time yesterday, well, quite a while, trying to get magazine transfer images off the gel plate, and I don't know if you can see, but I used some skeletonized leaves and tried to pull a print, and I just got the veins of the leaves, so... Anyway, that's where this came from, and I thought, well, that's a good background for something someday. So, that's why I chose to use the Payne's Gray back here, because I know I was going to use this. But, I did get one good image transfer. Now, all the ones I tried were all from the same L magazine, and this is the only one that worked. They were all high contrast. So this was black um, down on the plate first and then the transfer and then I picked it up with the white paint. And then I just used archival ink and sepia and a blending tool and just colored the background behind her with that sepia color. So I'm going to start by just putting these down with some matte medium. That's making a sticky noise. There's one that I pulled off the plate um, just using the reverse image of the leaves. But I wasn't nuts about that either. So I'm just going to put some matte medium down here. Start from the inside, push to the outside. Hard to tell if it's straight with the torn edges, but I think that's pretty good. I tore the edges. I made a deckle edge ruler. I'll show you in a second. And I saw somebody a long time ago on YouTube, and I don't remember who it was. It may have been even more than one person that did it, that I saw. Now, while that's starting to dry, I bought just one of these cheap and now cheap plastic rulers. Now is a good time to get these at you know your dollar store or whatever. They're just flimsy, cheap rulers. But back to school is a good time to pick them up. And I took. Let me find my tool. I can show you what I use. I just have these needle nose jewelry pliers and I just took and snipped out, broke off, and you can see they're not all the same size. I think you can see that. So, I mean, you can buy deckling rulers, you know, online or in your art shops, but they're pretty expensive and I don't use it real, real often. So, it was just a real good economical option. So, I did it. Okay, I'm going to dry this with the heat tool. Okay, those layers are dried now. I am getting a little bit of rippling of my paper. So, once this is dry, maybe 24 hours, I'll stack some heavy books on that. And it will flatten back out again. So, next... I have this paper 
It's from an old handwriting textbook. And I, it's so faded, I tried to go over it, but I don't. It's okay, but I think it's now too dark. So I want to go back to the face. It's the same thing on the other side. But I just kind of like that faded handwriting on there. So I'm going to put it down that way. And then these were the leaves. This was the leaf. <laughs> One of the skeletonized leaves that I tried to use on the jelly plate and it didn't work very well. But I took a glassine envelope and I glued the leaf to the envelope using this matte super heavy gel. The mistake I made was gluing it down and then cutting it. What my thought was was to make wings, but if I had cut it and flipped one half, that would have worked, but I didn't. So my 70 year old brain just wasn't <laughs> thinking ahead enough. So I don't think that makes very good wings. I mean, I could put it like that, I guess. And then from the same handwriting book, there are these long strips with sayings written on them. And then the, and they were attached in the spine of the book and laid on top of the page, which had the handwriting, the blank handwriting lines for the students to copy the quote down along the page. So I did go over this one that said, yield not to temptations. And I was thinking about putting that there. So I may have to rethink the whole leaf thing. I'm sure not sure where, still not sure where they're going to go. I may go back to that idea. I mean, it can go this way. Why not, right? Sure. So I'm going to put those down. And I might, I think before I put this down, I'm going to just go around the edges of that with the sepia um, ink. So I have a very old author card. This is um, William Collins Bryant. That's his picture. I don't know what the game was, but I thought I would start to build a little collage down here somewhere maybe on top of that paper. So let me put this paper down first. And then the, actually, I think I'm gonna put this behind this card. So I'm going to put this down first. Let me see where. Off, off there. Mm -hmm. I don't want to cover too much of her up. I'm going to move it down and in. So right about there. This is another pretty old piece of paper. Okay, so I have a couple more pieces, but I want to hit them with the archival ink. So I'm going to do that, and then I'll be back. Okay, I decided I'm going to put this Yield Not to Temptations up there. And I thought rather than getting this page any wetter, and because this paper is very old, 
I'm just using a glue stick to put it down. So right there. And I did just kind of randomly hit it with that sepia ink pad, the archival ink. And then down here I have a couple of pieces that I took out of an old book that says be careful what you say. And then Again, old paper, as I was putting ink on it, it tore, but I think, fortunately, it tore between two letters, so I can piece that back together, I think. But that says, speak gently, sticking on my finger. Those are going to go there. I'm going to go around some of these pieces with a Stabilo All Pencil. I just feel like it needs something else. I was originally going to put these down here, but I liked them better there. I'm going to look for something else. This little group needs at least three pieces, I think, and I'm not really counting this because I think that's part of the background. So I'm going to rummage through my stuff and find something else to go here and then go around the edges with the Stabilo, and then I'll be back and we'll finish this up. Okay, everything is down. Whoops, that needs to be down a little better. Almost tore it. I found a little drug label from an old drug store that I put here and in the ticket. So I think that looks a little more filled out and better. And I'm going to take my Stabilo all and just go around this and then I'll activate it and create a bit of a shadow. And I, I'm pretty sure that I've mentioned before that I like to activate my Stabilo All with matte medium instead of water because once it dries, it will be permanent and I don't have to worry about it smearing later if it gets wet because it won't. So I'm just going to go around these. I'll just speed this up and get you to the end. I'll bring this up for you. You can see the Stabilo just gives that nice grungy shade and kind of makes those pieces stand out a little bit more. So I'm calling this one done. This is something you can easily do in your journal. If you don't want to put it on a, you know, a separate piece of paper, this is good if you want to take it out of the pad and frame it or whatever. But yeah, it was fun. Those of you who bought my vintage paper packs, I think that you would find enough pieces in those packs to um, do something like this. If you've had good luck with a particular publication, in doing those image transfers on the gel plate let me know which magazines you used because like I said L this was the only one that worked process wise technique wise I did pretty much the same on each one but I was happy to get one at least so anyways I hope you enjoyed watching I'll take some still pictures of this and put them at the end of the video Thanks for coming along. If you're not a subscriber and you like what you see, go ahead and click my subscribe button and ring the bell to be notified when I upload new videos. And let me know what you think of this process.
Have you used natural materials to create just kind of organic backgrounds for your art? Leave me a comment and let me know. And in the meantime, go make some art. Bye.